of faith disturbing. <laughs> yes oh my gosh i brought the horse head out for this one guys a comeback victory for our denver broncos yes 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 but you know what a victory like this we could take our third victory toast of the season but a special victory deserves a special victory toast Come with me, let's go take one. So this is what I mean by a special victory toast. Got a huge Bronco bowl. I bought a whole thing of Orange Crush. Special victory deserves a special toast. This is gonna be something. So let's go take this victory toast. My friends, the ultimate victory toast. Cheers. <sighs> Whew. That's a lot. <laughs> Hope I don't do too many of those. This is just for special wins, though. But anyways, let's get into the game recap. What is going on my city? Welcome back to Broncos Country News and I am your host and anchor Kayla Malden. Welcome to the week 8 recap of the Denver Broncos. 31 to 30 comeback win over the LA Chargers. This was one of the weirdest games I've ever watched. It was a lot of fun to, to finish for the finish. Very heart pounding, not good for my health, but I'm used to that at this point with this team. They won in the most Denver Bronco-esque way possible in that they didn't just win. They won um, in a very close finish. It couldn't be easy. It could never be easy with this team. And that's a theme among Denver sports teams. Like, they, uh, the Nuggets, Rockies, Avs, it has to be last second. It has to be really close. Um, but, hey, I will take a win. I said going into it, we could not afford to lose this game. After that Kansas City debacle, they needed this game to bounce back. And you can't afford to go 2-5 and because that all oh, that sinks your morale, sinks your ship. And Drew Locke needed to prove he could have a bounce back game, as did a lot of people on this team. We didn't have Tim Patrick or Graham Glasgow, which really hurt the line because they brought the house. They were really hitting Drew Locke, uh, Joey Bosa, and um, Melvin Ingram. They, they were doing their job. They were getting through. But the Broncos stood tall. They managed to win. It didn't look that way to start out, though. Like, we went out, it, they looked to have some high confidence. They went out, and everything went wrong. Uh, we couldn't get a thing going in the ground game. They were stopping everything. Drew Locke didn't have time to throw, and whenever he did have time to throw, there wasn't really a lot to work with. And the Chargers just looked really well put together. Justin Herbert was playing pretty good, though he did start off with a pick to Justin Simmons. But when we went off the field, you would have just thought... Blowout. And at one point, we were down 24-3. to And me and a lot of Broncos fans, we were done. We were, and I'll admit, we were like, man, another lost season. Uh, I was, because it looked like the team quit. It looked like they had no fight in them anymore. I was about ready. Like, oh, Fangio gone. Shermer gone. I was really starting to doubt uh, if Drew Locke was really our answer moving forward. I'll admit, I was starting to lose a little faith in Drew. Um... Not that I wanted to cut him or move on from Drew Locke, per se, but I was like, I don't know. Things ain't looking too good. I was ready to go boot Elway as well. 
I was ready to come in here and make just a five minute rant video raining on my team. But then the fourth quarter happened. Philip Lindsay, God bless that man, the Colorado born kid, breaks out a 55 yard run, 24 to 10. Okay. And then after Drew Locke threw a bad interception, oh boy. Herbert throws a pick to Bryce Callahan, and hey, that saved us because now we have a chance. Drew Luck comes back. He comes back slinging. He, he's throwing some darts. He's moving the ball down the field. Then all of a sudden, he throws a beautiful pass to Albert O. The rookie from Missouri, from his old college days, gets his first touchdown catch in the NFL. Congratulations to Albert Okwebunam. He gets his first catch of the season, his first touchdown catch of, the, of his NFL career. Hopefully, the first of many to come. 24-17. Okay, I thought at least we're pulling in close. At least we won't get blown out. 27-17. I thought I don't know if we can climb out of this. I thought we were done. <laughs> Two plays later, Drew throws a dime to Deshaun Hamilton, and Hamilton, who beats the safety, both safeties, he breaks it out deep. Touchdown. 27-24. The Broncos have the momentum. They have life. They've stolen it back. The Chargers are starting to slip a little bit. Now they do get down the field, and Kareem Jackson is letting down hits. Takes out his own man, A.J. Boye, Steve Atwater style. If you've seen that clip of Steve Atwater from the Super, Super Bowl 32, where he freaking knocks out his own corner and the Packers receiver at the same time. But we make them settle for a field goal, 30-24. Excellent clock management by Vic Fangio. Because now we have an extra 20... 20 30 seconds so and that can help we end up going down the field the, the plays are dissecting but i still have doubt in my mind i just don't know we're down by six we get a huge break when gordon manages to get a first down saving us another 10 seconds on the clock we get a break on a pass interference call when they push albert owen back in the end zone then on the one yard line i had no idea what we were going to run uh, I liked the RPO, run pass option, because if the defense bites on that pass, just give it to Gordon, let him bounce. If not, Drew Luck can either take it or throw it. And that defender, I will actually say that the defender made a good idea to go for Drew instead of KJ Hamler, because if he backs off, Drew's got an open lane. There's no one to get him. And if he, but if he can at least maybe not sack Drew Luck, but get in his face, get some pressure, make him make a bad throw, give a better chance there. But he gets it right to K.J. Hamler. And K.J. Hamler, in a game of butt cheeks, Albert O. dragged his butt in the end zone. Hamler drags his rear end in the end zone. Comeback victory. Broncos win 31-30. Drew Locke with three touchdown passes. Unbelievable. I could not believe how good he played. Like, Drew Locke saved, one, his job. He saved the game, and he may have just saved the season. Like, this was like a career-defining moment for um, for the Broncos, and for Drew Luck as well. This was like a career-defining moment. Like, one thing that I always like to ask people, how do you play in the face of adversity in pro sports? How do you do in the face of adversity? Down 24-3, the offense somehow got something going. I don't know what. I don't know what clicked with them. I don't know what worked with them. They finally got it going, and we, we made something of it. This offense finally got something going. And one of my points of praise and criticism is Pat Shermer. First, my criticism, he looked like the game plan was terrible in the first half. Almost it looked like he didn't have a game plan. And almost just looked like, let's try this play. Oh, that didn't work. Let's try this play. No, oh, that didn't work. Let's try this play. Like It looked like he had no game plan to start. But... Thankfully, uh, and it looked like Drew was playing in handcuffs the whole time. Like, he wasn't going to let Drew do what he liked doing. And then in the fourth quarter, the handcuffs came off, and off we went. And now I'm like, let this be our offense for a whole game. If we'd have played like that the whole quarter, we could have put up 40 points if we'd have played like that the whole game instead of just this, the fourth quarter. But it got done. <laughs> it got done. It got done. Uh, we won the game. I hope Pat Shermer is continuing to learn from this. I hope he and Drew keep working it out. Drew Luck, I read, made a great uh, speech at halftime to get the guys up and going. And that's what I like from my QB. 
I watched his press conference, I watched his interviews, the kid seems happy, he seemed confident, and he seemed... What I liked about Drew is that uh, if anyone was upset about this whole thing, it was him, the offensive performance up to that point. Uh, he looked more upset than anybody, and he even said he was angry at himself, which may have been a reason why he wasn't playing as good as he could. He said when he started talking about it in the locker room, he said it was almost like vocalized therapy, like he was just flushing it out, and then he played more loose. KJ Hamler noted how he how calm he was in the pocket, how calm he was on the on the drive, which is something to be noted. Drew Locke was able to do this with a bunch of rookie receivers. We didn't have Tim Patrick, we didn't have Cortland Sutton. We had our most experienced guys on the field uh, that have been on the team for a while. Obviously, Gordon's the veteran, but Lindsey and Fant. Uh, Fant's a second-year guy. Lindsey's in his third year. But Judy uh, and Hamler, Albert O, they're rookies. All rookies, and Drew made it work. Judy got some big plays out of that. Finally got a big game from Jerry Judy. Like, I know he can do it. This is what we need from the offense. They ran with... Lindsay effectively, which by the way, make Lindsay the bell cow. For the love of God, make Lindsay the bell cow. I know Gordon is, we're paying a bit more money to Gordon. Hey, we only have one year of that deal. If you want to cut bait, fine. Lindsay deserves the money. He does. He's been better. He's more explosive. He is everything you want on this team. He's right now our best player on offense. You could almost argue he's the best player on the team currently. Philip Lindsay is everything you want right now on the Broncos, and this is what the offense is. That run gave us a spark. <sighs> I love Philip Lindsay. Lee, I know paying running backs is risky. The kids earned it, and <sighs> I don't know. It's just there are negatives. Of course, Drew Lock could have played way better in the first half. Like I feel he could have, if he'd have played like that in the first half, he could have had a five touchdown game the way he was playing. But you know what? It's hard to really be negative when you just had a huge comeback that honestly may have just turned this season around. Like it looked like we were going to a downward spiral of an awful year, blowing it up again, and then Drew Lock came in clutch. And it does remind me. Uh, I'm not saying that this is that he's going to be this, but remember, if for Broncos fans who are historians, um, in John Elway's first season, uh, uh, as well, I know this is like technically his second year, but this is his first full year as our starter. But in John Elway's first year, uh, we were playing the Baltimore Colts, and they were down 19 nothing going into the fourth quarter. Offense couldn't get anything going; they were dead to rights. And Elway threw three touchdown passes to, in the fourth quarter to win, which is exactly what Drew just did. Offense was dead; nothing was working. He threw three touchdown passes in the fourth to um, to get them going. They, they we scored 20, we scored four touchdowns in the second half, which was insane. <sighs> I was just happy because we finally now know what the offense can be. We know what they can do. And this is still, again, without Cortland Sutton or Tim Patrick. And, man, we miss those guys. And missing Glasgow, too. Schlotman, bless his heart, he did his best. That is no joke of a pass rush. Drew Locke got pummeled to the first three quarters. Fourth quarter, nobody could touch him. And... He looked a lot more comfortable. He could set his feet. He could throw. He wasn't rolling out as much. They need to limit that for Drew. Tell him to stay in the pocket. Let him set his feet. Let him throw. Let him go through his progressions, which is obviously what he's best at. Keep Lindsey pounding that rock. He's our best player right now on offense. Keep him going. Defense, despite the 30 points, I was pleased. Like, I've, again, that defense looked pissed at the offense. Finally, offense got something going. Defense made some big plays. We got a huge interception from Bryce Callahan that has that, that oh, basically saved the game because if that's a touchdown, then the game's out of reach at that point. And, man, and Bryce Callahan, now I see why the Broncos signed him. And Vic Fangio was his coach in Chicago. This is exactly what we need out of Bryce Callahan. I love this out of our corners. They picked up poor A.J. Boye all day, and... Uh, Hopefully he's okay with that concussion. Hopefully he can play against Atlanta like Lindsey had a concussion. He played against L.A. Um, this past week. But this was such a good game. Such a win. This feels like exactly what the Broncos needed. Locke needed it to get his confidence back, to earn back some stuff now. 
I loved some of the mic'd up stuff I was watching. This is just what we needed. This is what the Broncos needed. Hey guys, let's uh, give some credit to our coach, uh, Vic Fangio. He uh, he didn't let this team quit. He We were down 24-3. Everyone pretty much counted us out. And Fangio refused. He kept the team fighting, which is what great leaders do. They rally their troops in adversity. Drew did it. Fangio did it. I love to see that. This could be the start of something special, guys. This could be just what they needed to uh, get this thing going. Now, what this will lead to, I don't know. But needless to say, I am very, very, very excited. The possibilities are endless for this team, and I personally can't wait. So much to love right now. Hey, Chargers fans, that was a good game. And hey, y'all got a quarterback. Uh, Herbert looks pretty good. Uh, looks like this is, uh, I hope this is the first of many insane duels between these two, Herbert and Locke. Uh, who knows, guys, and if the trend continues for for Locke and Herbert, they keep going up. And if Derek Carr keeps playing good, the AFC West could be probably the one of the best quarterback divisions in all of football, you know. Mahomes, Carr, Herbert, Locke, who knows. But anyways, guys, this was such an amazing win. So much to enjoy, so much to love. So, go out, enjoy it, uh, you know, take a big orange crush toast, uh, victory toast, maybe not like what I did, but take one anyway for this team. Anyways, that's it for me, guys. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Please sure to like, comment, and subscribe on the video. Be sure to share. Your, share. Uh, please be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I'll put the links in the description below. Anyways, that's it for me. Broncos country. 303. I'll see you guys later.